Zachariah, that is Enoch, may Allah's peace be upon him, then Prophet Nuh, may peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. After Nuh, we then discuss <coughs> Hud, after Hud, we discuss Prophet Saleh, after Saleh, we spoke on the personality of Prophet Ibrahim, peace and blessings of Allah be upon them. And uh, today, inshallah ta'ala, uh, and yesterday we spoke on the personality of Prophet Lut, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, our last episode. That is number eight. And episode number nine today, inshallah, is on the Prophet uh, Ismail, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, which has been said or written in English as uh, Ishmael. Prophet Ismail, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, was among the Arab prophets that were sent to mankind, starting with Prophet Hud, Prophet Saleh, then Prophet Ibrahim, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, is from the Arab prophets that were sent to humanity. Prophet Ismail, in discussing his uh, story, there are certain things that could be mentioned simultaneously along with his father, that is Abraham, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Prophet Ismail, his name has been mentioned 12 times in the glorious Quran. The name has been repeated 12 times. So because of this, I challenge our students of knowledge to go through the glorious Quran from beginning to end and discover the chapters in which name Ismail has been mentioned. With this, we will be able to, inshallah, understand more about his story. Since our presentation here is more of a superficial, we emphasize on the major lessons we are to learn from their biography. So the name of Prophet Ismail, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, has been repeated 12 times in the glorious Quran. And uh, secondly, he was a son to Prophet Abraham, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. As we all know that in our last episode discussing the story of Prophet Abraham and that of Lut, we mentioned the relationship between Prophet Abraham and Lut, that Abraham was an uncle to Prophet Lut, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. So, uh, and at the same time, he was his nephew. Because of this, there are certain things that in the course of our presentation, we will mention in relation to Prophet Abraham, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Prophet Abraham got married to his daughter, Sarah. They spent many years without children, without any child. And his wife, Sarah, discovered that Abraham, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, was interested in children or at least a child. However, he found it difficult to tell her loudly. When she discovered that, at that time, the mother of Ismail, by name Hajar, was under the care of Sarah, the first wife of Abraham, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. So when she discovered that uh, he was interested in children or at least a child, she just discussed with him as his wife that why can't you get married to Hajar that was under her care then. Abraham, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, accepted that. Meaning he accepted the idea of getting married to another wife. With this he could be able to get a child or children. And his first wife offered that to him and he accepted this also tells us how the relationship was very cordial and how they control their own uh, jealousy and even offered someone under her care to her husband to get married to. There is a huge lesson, a very important one for our sisters to learn from what uh, Sarah did. So Abraham got married to Hajar. And Hajar, as his wife, 
the one that came after Sarah gave birth to Prophet Ismail, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. They were in an area that today you can say is part of Palestine at that time. Because as, as we explained in our previous presentations, when Abraham migrated from his town, he moved to a place that was around Egypt and Palestine, where he settled down. Uh, as in Suratul Anbiya, we discussed in our, in our previous presentations. So that Hajar, when he got married to her, gave birth to Ismail, that is Ishmael. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. And he happened to be the first child and the eldest child of Prophet Abraham, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, because it was after him that he got also Ishaq as his child as well. So Abba Ismail Ishmael was the first child of his father, Prophet Abraham, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. However, later there was a misunderstanding between Sarah and Hajar, according to a report of a uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas may Allah be pleased with him and finally Abraham peace and blessings of Allah be upon him one night said to his wife Hajar the mother of prophet Ishmael that is Ismail peace and blessings of Allah be upon him that uh, get ready in the next few days we will travel along with your child it is going to be a very long journey through desert through cultivated land, through mountains, and many more. So Hajar listened to him carefully, and she started preparing for that long trip, long journey. After a few days, Ab Abraham notified her that we will travel tomorrow. In the morning, he took her along with her child, that is Prophet Ishmael, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. They embark on a journey, traveling, through uncultivated land, through cultivated land, through desert, through barren valley, through mountains, through rocks, and many more. They were traveling. After a few days, without reaching their destination, she asked him, please, Abraham, where are you taking us to? Because she couldn't understand. The journey was a very long one, and there was no explanation. And at the same time, she was not aware of the destination. So she asked him. He couldn't reply her, but she remained silent. Until the rich Arabian Peninsula, that is the actual location of Makkah today, the actual location of uh, Al Masjid al Haram, the Kaaba, the sacred Kaaba of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they reached there, he settled them down there. And uh, along with them, there was a food and drink. The food and drink were not sufficient even for four days, uh, for two days, even 48 hours. So he left her with that food, which could not be sufficient for two days, and small quantity of water as well. He was about to leave the place, and she asked him, why are you leaving us here? He couldn't reply. Why? He was not allowed to reply meaning he was not allowed to reply divinely. Later on she said to him, Allahu amaraka bihada, did your Lord, did Allah command you to bring us here? Did he command you to bring us here? Then he said to her, yes. Meaning Allah Ta'ala commanded him to take his wife along with his son to that place. That is to the position of a Makkah, most importantly, the environment of a Kaaba. And she said, Idan, fala yuna. If that is the case, Allah Ta'ala is not in any way going to subject us to any punishment or difficulty. Meaning she was very comfortable since that journey and where they settled down was a divine message from her creator, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. She accepted that idea wholeheartedly. And Abraham, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, kept left them there and he turned away, meaning leaving them there. When he was not visible by his wife and his son, that is Ishmael, peace and blessings of Allah be upon them. 
he raised his hand up and supplicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take care of his family because he was worried looking at the place. That place was a barren valley. There wasn't any water. There wasn't any food to eat. And the quantity of food he left behind could not be enough for two days. And even the dream could not be enough for two days. So he raised his hand up and supplicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take care of his family by saying, Rabbana inni askantu min dhurriyati biwadin ghayri di zari'in inda baytika al-muharram Rabbana liyukima salah faj'al afidatan min al-nasi tahawi ilayhim warzukuhum min al-thamarati la'allahum yashkurun This is in Surah Ibrahim verse 37. He supplicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying, Rabbana He supplicated Allah by saying, Rabbi, O oh my Lord, inni askantu, I have left behind. I have left behind. Min dhurriyati, my offspring, meaning my wife and my son. Biwadin ghayri zizarin, in a valley which is barren, it, and it was a barren desert. That is in a valley that was uncultivated. Rabbana liyuqim as salah And I did so, O oh Allah, for them to establish prayers. And he supplicated to Allah by saying, requesting, pleading with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to turn, to take the attention of our humanity to that place. And that is why it is because of that supplication that every day as a Muslim, you feel you are interested in traveling for Hajj. You always feel that you need to travel and perform hajj. Why? Because of that prayer. Inni as country min dhurriyati biwadin ghayri zizar in inda baytika al-muharram rabbana liyukimu salata faj'al afidatan min al-nasi tahawi ilayhim. And he supplicated to Allah by saying, Warzukuhum min al-thamarat. O Allah, provide for them from your provision of uh, fruits. And he finally supplicated to Allah to make them grateful and thankful. So that was the prayer of Abraham. Firstly, he supplicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying that he left behind his wife and his child. Oh Allah, they are here behind to establish prayers. Oh Allah, in this place there is no water and no food to eat. Oh Allah, provide even fruits for them. Because of that prayer of Abraham today, if you travel to Mecca, in spite of the fact that the place is still barren, but you will discover that the quality of fruits there is beyond your imagination. In your country, where even your own land is not barren in any way, you can hardly find that quality. Why? Because he supplicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to provide fruits, interesting fruits, for the people of Mecca, specifically for his family. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered his prayer. So this is what actually happened. When he supplicated and he left his family behind. So that in the Askantu min Duriati Biwarin Ghaidi Zaki in the Baitik al Muharram, he left his family behind and he moved to Palestine where he left his first wife there. That was Sarah. And he left Hajar in Mecca along with his son Abraham uh, Ishmael peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. He left them behind. And Sarah was left behind. When she exhausted the food and water left behind by her husband, and she discovered that her child Ishmael was in need of water, and she couldn't have anything to provide to him, she started walking within the vicinity of that area moving from one place to another she ascended over a sapa that mountain of sapa she couldn't see any water she returned to marwa without seeing any water she moved to sapa she did that seven times and according to the opinion of ibn abbas may allah be pleased with him and there is also a hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
that was the origin of Safa Wal Marwa. The trip we usually embark on between Safa and Marwa seven times in Hajj or in Umrah. The origin of that is that effort of her Hajar while looking for water to provide to her son Ishmael. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. That was the origin. In a long story, there is no time for that. At the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided her to the well of Zamzam through his angels. And she discovered the water of Zamzam and she took part of it and provided for her child, that is Ishmael, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. This is what actually happened. And it was the origin of her, the water of Zamzam, that is highly blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a blessed water that if you have any problem, you drink ma zamzam, the water of Zamzam, with an intention of uh, praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to provide a solution to your challenge. Insha'Allah ta'ala, that challenge will be resolved divinely. What, whenever you get opportunity, drink ma zamzam. Particularly in these days of uh, calamities, pandemic, and many more, it is a good time that if you have ma uzanzam, always recite part of the Quran, some important supplications from the Quran or Sunnah, drink part of it and provide part of it to your family. That water is highly blessed and is very important for us to always give it that respect and always utilize it whenever we need Allah's intervention in any challenge that we are being confronted with. So that was the origin of our ma uzanzam. And at the end, Abraham, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, after a period of time, he decided to visit his family in Mecca. So he left that place of Palestine and traveled all the way to Mecca to come and meet his family. That is his wife, Sarah, a Hajar, and his child, Ishmael, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. So he came to Mecca and visited them. It was at that time that he even said to his child Abra Ishmael when he grew up that Allah Ta'ala directed him to build a house for him, meaning for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And this is what they started doing between Abraham and his son Ishmael. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon them as in the Quran Surah Al-Baqarah like verse 127 128 and even 129 when Allah says taqabbal minna innaka anta alim rabbana waja'alna muslimayni laka wa min dhurriyatina ummatan muslimatan lak wa arina manasikana wa tubu alayna innaka anta tawabur rahim Rabbana waj'al fihim rasulan minhum yatlu alayhim ayatika wa yu'allimuhumul kitaba wal hikmata wa yuzakkihim innaka antal alimul hakim In these three verses in Baqarah verse 127, 128 and 129 Allah Ta'ala says to us wa idhi yarfa'u Ibrahimul qawaida min al-bayti wa Ismailu Remember when Abraham peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, <coughs> was raising the foundations, that is al kawaida the foundations of the house, along with his son, meaning being supported by his son Ishmael. At the time they were building the Kaaba, they were saying, Rabbana taqabbal minna, O oh Allah accept this from us. Innaka anta tawwabur rahim you are oft forgiven and the most merciful. So it was the time they were building Kaaba. If Abraham was constructing or rebuilding the Kaaba, being supported by his son Ishmael, peace and blessings of Allah be upon them. So they were busy constructing the Kaaba. Ishmael was bringing stones for the Kaaba while Abraham was the one doing the actual construction. And they were supplicating to Allah, Rabbana taqabbal minna, O oh Allah, accept this good deed from us. This tells us that no matter how sincere you are, no matter how pious you feel you are, you always need to supplicate to Allah to accept your good deeds. Why? Because 
prophets that were elevated were, were respected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they were elevated by him used to pray to Allah to accept their good actions so it is because of this let us not deceive ourselves no matter how good our work is our good deeds we need to always supplicate to Allah to accept the good deeds and forgive our shortcomings and our limitations that is why al-ikhlas sincerity is key to the quality of our work and he also supplicated to Allah by saying وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَائِلَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَاعِيلُ رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ سَمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ وَرَبَّنَا وَجَعَلْنَا مُسْلِمَيْنِ لَكَ O Allah, make both of us submissive to you. Meaning, make us to be among those who submit themselves to you. That is, وَجَعَلْنَا مُسْلِمَيْنِ لَكَ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِنَا And even from our offspring, مُسْلِمَةً لَكَ make them a nation of submission meaning a nation of muslims that are going to submit themselves that is why you discover women dhurriyatina from the dhurriya from the offspring of ibrahim from his progeny prophet ishaq image prophet yaqub image prophet yusuf prophet yusuf image may allah's peace and blessings be upon them all of them emerge from the family from the offspring of Abraham. Why? And from the offspring of Ishmael, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, emerge. Make them a nation, your own nation. And show us the places of our ibadah. That is how to perform Hajj, the ceremonies of Hajj. Like Ayyamu Mina, Ayyamu Araba, and the rest. Watub Alayna. And finally, they say, Rabbana Waba him Rasul and Minho. O Allah, raise a prophet from among them. That prophet was Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was from the supplication of both Prophet Abraham and his son Ishmael while they were constructing the Kaaba. Up to the time that Ishmael grew up, and some people migrated from other places to Mecca, the location of Kaaba, when the sacred house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was built or rebuilt by Prophet Abraham and his son Ishmael. May peace and blessings of Allah be upon them. So at that time, what happened? Many people migrated to that place. Why? Because now, because of their supplications, they discovered Ma Uzanzam. And secondly, the sacred house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was built. So, so many tribes migrated to that area. Among them, some of them spoke Arabic language. It was through them that Ishmael, may Allah's peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, learn Arabic language. That is where he even learned the language itself, because they migrated and joined him along with his mother in that place. Up to the time he grew up, that his father was proud of him. His father was so much attached to him then his father was directed divinely to slaughter his son. 